Ladies and gentlemen, believers, hoglings, and everyone in between, I am your host, the Golden Warrior. And if you hear my voice, that can only mean one thing. That one thing is... He's not the champ anymore. Wait, wait, wait. That can only mean one thing, that you are listening to The Golden Report, where we cover everything in the world of professional wrestling, from New Japan to Impact to the indie scene, and sometimes WWE, only when it's necessary. But today, but today, we uh, we got some news for you. Uh, Impact did a hey Karen, hey Karen. Uh, Impact covered a new, well not new. Impact covered uh, the best moments from 2018. Uh, hey Jamie, how you doing? And then on top of that, uh, I will give you the matches that you should. I'm going to give you a list of matches that you should watch. It's told by me, the Golden Warrior. Now, with me as always is the ruler of all hosts, Donovan Cartwright. How you doing? Doing good. And uh, if she's here, yes. If she just joined us with us. Hello. Hey, Karen. Um, and, uh, we're doing a very short Golden Report. Yes. And actually, our, our hot topic is the best moments of impact. From the year 2018. That's why you're here. Yeah. So uh, with us right now is Coco, a.k.a. Karen. How you doing, Karen? So, yeah, we're covering the best hey. moments of impact from the year 2018. And we were after we were going to see uh, – we're each going to give uh, our favorite moments. I mean, I have a list, and no, they don't all involve Rosemary or Allie. Some of them. But, but like 95% of them do. Some of them. Some of them do. 95%. That's some of them. Okay. <laughs> to be fair. So, uh, Coco's, but. 90% of Coco's involve Eli Drake. That, okay. Shut <laughs> up. All right, so. Yeah. So let's start. So, uh. First, we're going to cover what news do you have, Donovan? Or unless you want to just jump uh, right into on. the impact no, stuff. Let's, let's get into impact because if we, if we just do the news, Coco can, can, can give her final thoughts and bug her off, bug her off, bug okay. off whatever she wants to do. She All wants right. to stick up front. Okay. So we've got some news, but we've got impact news. So. Yeah. Yeah, let's cover. All right. So this news for impact, were you going to cover it or should I? No, no, no. I told you I didn't have – that's not on my new stuff. I figured uh, you or Karen would want to talk about that. That's why – Karen, by the way, thank you for being here without any notice, but I didn't know you were – I didn't know you were available, but I figured, hey, this is one of those blindside things where this is the woman, this is the pro that can adapt. I mean, she's on the Monday show. If, you, if she can't adapt, she's not – she hasn't been doing a good show for a while, and we all know that's BS. Yep. <laughs> All right, so I got got the report right here. According to mandatory.com. Uh, huh? Reliable. Yeah, according Reliable. to mandatory. Reliable. According to mandatory, Impact Wrestling announces its new network. It's leaving Pop TV in January, and it's going to move to Pursuit Channel. Uh, apparently, that's on Direct TV. Apparently. It's on what? They're going to go into what? It's a par- uh, pursuit, the Pursuit Channel. I don't know what that is. I don't know. Nobody knows what it is, but it's going to air weekly on Friday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern time, starting January 11th. Yeah, because uh, TNA said they wanted a later time slot. They wanted to do that with Pop. Yeah. I don't know why, but whatever. Yeah, so starting J- Friday, January 11th, uh, after Homecoming, the first uh, Impact After Homecoming, it's going to air on the Pursuit Channel on Friday nights at 10 p.m. So, uh, according to the global network, uh, uh, no, that works. I because uh, the live stream I find it on, I find it on uh, Fightful on Fight Network, not Fightful, it's on the Fight Network, that's where I find it. So, um, oh, oh, oh. Um, it says, according to Ed Nordholm, he said a uh, the Pursuit oh, the Channel. Dish, the dishbag that tried to keep control of the, heart of the broken universe, which I'm, I'm probably should 
Yeah, yeah, he would have been. It would have been better off overall, being honest. He said the Pursuit Channel is a natural fit for Impact. He says it has a passionate viewership base that correlates strongly with our core audience, and it's one of the few broadcast destinations that is expanding its footprint, enjoying a 15% increase in broadcast distrib- distribution this year alone. If Impact Wrestling coming off a tremendous year of audience growth go- globally and positive fan engagement, we look forward to leveraging our respective res- resources to bring fans more of the wrestling content they want to see. Tougher, edgier action. Which, if we're being honest, that's always been the one advantage Impact has always had over WWE is definitely edge. Can we all agree on that? I don't know. I don't see that one come from there. Well, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> they said the one advantage they had was edge. That that is that is funny. <laughs> they should have said edginess. Yeah, they're very edgier. <laughs> Definitely edgier. They're very edgier. They're, um, they're really good. They're really really good at edgy. Yeah, let me see. They it's said, funny. uh, excuse me. And I feel like Impact is also more. No, hang on. I want to say this now, Karen. Correct me. It's not just edgier content, but the storylines are a lot easier to follow. Except the alley and Sue Young shit. Outside of that, everything's a lot easier to digest, simpler to follow. They don't try to overcomplicate storylines by turning your wrestlers into comic book characters. Pretty much. And not only that, there's not a lot of problems with Impact like there is with WWE because uh, there's no not much changes uh, like WWE is, and there's not too many shows that they're uh, trying to throw out to the point where you get more fans. And the fact that in fact is trying to go at as their pays and uh, the movie had, uh, just simply don't give a fuck. That's what makes Impact a little bit better to watch than WWE is that steady next. And also, it's also it's, their storylines are a lot easier to follow. Like, you can miss a week. So, you can tune in the middle of the storyline you're like, not, not really sure what's going on. It's like, you can kind of figure out what's going on that, at that time. You go back and watch their highlights and say, oh, okay. Yeah, I get it. It's not really anything that's like super well thought out or suffering succotash is your catchphrase. Wow. Exactly. So, um, <laughs> I have a feeling you said what you said about the Rosemary Alley storyline to try and troll me, so I'm not going to fall no, into that. No, actually, track. I did not. I did not because that's the only storyline that actually is, is a little is actually complicated. It it really isn't. I would take the time to explain it, but I don't want to lose anybody. No, but see, the thing is, is you would have to explain it if you're watching because it's one of those things to where you'd have to have if you haven't been following it. And you haven't been, and you haven't really been tuning into this dude. You're one of the people that leads that tunes out when he's talking about it. It's one of those things you have to actually ask, "What's up with this?" Because it really isn't just a simple storyline. It, it it's is one of their bigger storylines, and that's where they put their, that's where they're putting a lot of more of their uh, writing in play. It's like everything the, else, even Eddie Edwards, is very easy to follow. It's like the top three storylines in there are what's going on with Rosemary and Ally. Whatever Sammy Callahan's doing, honestly, whatever what Sammy Callahan's what is doing. Sammy Callahan? I know, but he's beating the shit out of people for just because he can. Yeah, it's like whatever Sammy Callahan's doing is a storyline. Whatever this thing between Allie, Ro- Rosemary Alley and Suyan is a storyline, and then Eddie Edwards and his is his own thing. So yeah. Yeah, but you can follow the Sammy Callahan and Eddie Edwards. Eddie Edwards isn't that hard. But with the Suyan, Allie, Rosemary, and James Mitchell, don't forget that. Yeah, thing. and Kira Hogan. So, because that's, that's a match at that's a match of homecoming. So that's more complicated. Also, their other big storyline you're forgetting. Eli Drake and Abyss. That too. Very oh. easy to follow. Eli Drake wanted to sue people. Abyss came in as his lawyer gimmick. He attacked it. So the ice cream and Abyss. Yeah. So, really not that hard to figure out that either. Nope, it really isn't. It really is. I mean, Karen, I literally just explained the entire feud of Eli Drake and Abyss. Yeah, yeah. This is why I like Impact. You don't have to invest a whole lot of brain power into it. I mean, yes, the women, the knockouts, the knockouts, like I said, you have to actually invest a little more time into that. But for the most part, 
what's going on on a weekly basis. Really slow, really easy to follow. They don't try to rush things. It's not like WWE where you just have the same thing every week and nothing's happening. It's happening, but they're taking the time yeah. to build these storylines. Yeah, which is... Yeah, it was just, it was just see, the same thing about, about the WWE. Doing these like, random and snatches over and over again. I mean, if we're here, it's like, okay, what can we do that will actually be enjoyable? And there we go. So the yeah, matches I mean, have not ha- repeated itself severely too much. The WWE is a point where we can actually watch. Yeah, yeah, it, and it, like I said, all of their storylines, like Sammy Callahan, Eddie Edwards, Eli Drake and Abyss, they're all simple to follow because they're not doing, they're not over exasperating a lot of these things. They're not, you know, Eddie Edwards is just a backstage skit or a cake skit. It's nothing that's just like, okay, well, what the fuck's going on? He was in a mental institution and checked him himself, too. No, Alicia, Alicia, Alicia checked himself, checked him into that. Yeah, yeah. He checked himself okay. out, thanks to Raven. Yeah, and then how hard is that to follow? Not that hard. Not He's that. a lunatic and his wife had him committed. And Raven, who was also a, fel- a very ingenious lunatic, had him uncommitted. Yeah. So, what? Well, that's what I'm saying. How hard is this to follow? It's not. And they're not, they're not like doing the rapid pace storyline. It really isn't. Where they, that, it really they're isn't. keeping everything simple. They're keeping everything slow in the storylines. It's not where they're just doing the bare minimum where they do just enough to justify why these two are going to fight. They have enough going on to where they have a feud, but they're not, or, or, or a rivalry or whatever. They're doing just enough without putting a shit ton of time on one segment. They really do have a, a very progressive formula without actually having to be like overextended like WWE's 20 minute opening promos. You know, Impact doesn't do that. Nobody really gets more than 10 minutes if even that. They have a two hour time slot. They are doing, you know, five, maybe 10 minute segments, matches, etc. And we're getting a lot going on in the two-hour slot. Hell, I, 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 I'm actually more president to say we actually get more in two hours on Impact than we do on NXT UK, and that's a big statement. Wait, how many? How long is NXT UK? Two hours. It's I thought it was a one. They they no because they had one, but they moved it to two because they have so many tapings. You have to oh. remember now this is live. So well, I know that, but I mean. But they did that because they're doing two episodes of the show. Oh, the okay. thing is, is they're adding in Sorry. vignettes that weren't on the original program. Oh. That's why I started watching the, which is why I started watching the original UK broadcast because there's no vignettes. Oh, those right. are all WWE Network added in WWE production added. Okay. Um. So they actually chopped some of the matches too. So yeah. I, I want to enjoy the product in its raw format. Okay. Um. No, but no, I, I'm just saying this because. This is the Impact team right here. We all like Impact. I used to, Impact used to be my favorite couple. I said used to be. Dixie Carter made it very hard to be your favorite couple. All right, and I, see, I don't think she's there now. No, she's not. Ed Norholt is. This is like anthem. Yeah, but it's... I, I got one. Karen, I have one word for both of you that'll, that'll pretty much sum up Dixie Carter as the, as the uh, one who ran Impact. What was that? Dixie Land. Yeah. <laughs> you can't even deny that one. <laughs> oh, God, that was so stupid. Um, that's quick, man. Go away. Oh, my goodness. What was it? So, um. Oh, remember that time she had Hulk Hogan was, her contract was up and she was actually forced to beg Hulk Hogan to stay on my TV? I remember when, uh. I remember when Bully Ray put her through a table with her name on it. Um, she begged Hulk Hogan to stay. She was literally grabbing onto his leg, begging him to stay. Wow. Wasn't there a time that Bully Ray was supposed to go run DNA or Impact at one point? He, no, I, this was right after Aces and Eights. This is when Hogan walked out on the company. Yeah. And Bischoff was gone two weeks later because he didn't resign. Hogan's the one that brought Bischoff in. Bischoff was the only good thing about that because 
Bischoff had this idea that Dixie, that Dixie didn't, that Dixie didn't think was working because it was implemented wrong. Bischoff wanted to do Impact in, in two separate shows, one hour of nothing but wrestling, just the wrestling. Isaac, I know you'd appreciate that. Karen, I hope you remember. In the other hour was all the promos and you got a lot of backstage stuff or stuff that was promos that were mixed into the second hour. Oh, no, I think that would be great because not only were we getting wrestling, but we have a little bit more of these backstage uh, interviews uh, and this. Well, it's kind of like, it's kind of like how kind of not saying how it is, but if you look at the New Japan format, they have the show and then they release all the backstage segments on a separate time. Yeah, that's basically what Impact was doing. New Japan used to not used to not do that. They started doing that more since uh, post I remember um, I do remember they had this thing after watching TNA and after TNA, I think it was called like TNA Unplugged or whatever, with everybody was just talking backstage and stuff. Um, yeah, that was Bischoff. That was Bischoff. Yeah, that was good stuff. That was good. And here's the thing about Impact. Impact has a lot more programming in the UK. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's TNA coming. Epic. We don't get that here. And so, uh, all, of, all of their dark matches, I mean, TNA at one point had Joey Matthews, uh, Kevin Thorne. They were on there. They were on Epic. So, what they else? Had, was... They had the opportunity to get Gangrel and Kevin Thorne. Well. They also had the Dicks on there. No, it wasn't the dicks, it was the heartthrobs. Um, I have a question. When did uh, Bully Ray D? I want to say contract, to be honest. His contract was up. Dixie was fucking up finances. They, his contract fell through, so he ended up going to Ring of Honor. Because actually, Ring of Honor, people don't realize Ring of Honor is actually offered fairly decent paydays now. Uh, let me see. They're being... They're being ran by the Sinclair, by the Sinclair group. And those motherfuckers were loaded. Interesting. They're like they're like seven brothers running a company, and they're all wrestling fans, like Dixie Carter was, except that they're not hands on. Dixie Carter was a wrestling fan with fun. So a businesswoman, she comes from a business family, but she was a Panda Energy. Oh my god, dude. Panda Energy could have bought and sold WWE five times over. Um, so. They, they were just lending her money. She could not invest her money properly because they were budgeting her. They, her, her, her family, her parents were the ones who owned Panda Energy. She had money. She wasn't Ted Turner, though. Ted Turner was a wrestling fan and a businessman with money. She was a wrestling family, wrestling fan with money. I, I just wanted to clarify that. A lot of people thought Dixie Carter had a lot. Dixie Carter, dude, dude, there were prostitutes that had more net worth value than Dixie Carter had. I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying that to be mean. I, Dixie Carter, when she ran TNA, ran it into the ground, but she did some good things while she was there. I'm not going to take that away. I mean, if it wasn't for her, we wouldn't have got Kirk Angle. If anybody remembers that botch promo of his debut. Oh, I, I was sure. I, I came in when they, uh, they started having the front line and then uh, the main event, Mafia. I started watching when Christian debuted. I. Because I was. Don't. I remember Christian being there. I remember. So he came out, his first promo was against Monty Brown. And he says, hey, Monty, what? Do you know the capital of Thailand? What's that? Bangkok. Slapped to the nuts and started punching him. <laughs> I think the er Christian debut. <laughs> the uh, earliest of impact I remember, it was when uh, the earliest I remember Christian Cage, it was Christian, AJ, Tomco, I want to say Joe, but that's not right. Yeah, it was Christian, AJ, and Tomco, and like one other person were in the same, were in the faction together. 
and they were just Christian was heavy with the heavyweight champion, and they were just laying people out like it was going on a stop. He was heel. I remember the Angle Alliance versus the Christian Coalition. I remember they had to, well, they AJ had to choose. Christian and it, Kurt wanted AJ to choose. And AJ didn't choose. He left. And, like, I guess hold himself up at home and wouldn't answer anybody. Um, I'm going to be honest. Christian Cage did his breast promo in TNA because nobody writes for him. Uh, apparently, he'd sit there all day long practicing his promo. His instant classic promo when he was going to fight Kurt Angle, it's like, oh, it's real, it's damn real. And, he, and Christian's like, shut up! And he's like, okay. <laughs> Kurt Angle was actually in the promo. It, it was great. Like, you could tell Kurt Angle, Kurt Angle had fun with that. And Christian was having a lot of fun. Um, I remember when, I remember Judas Macias, uh, when he made debut against Abyss. Uh, uh, I remember Judas Macias. Ricky Bandera thought he was a multi multi hundred thousand dollar wrestler. That's why they're keeping. Uh, what else did he I? Wanted, he wanted he wanted Brock Lesnar money. I remember. Oh, That's wow. why he didn't stay for anybody that didn't know that. I remember. Um, There's a lot, to be honest. I was the earliest match I saw the earliest show. I didn't see the first show, um, but I saw the show where it was. X Division Championship. It was Psychosis, Low Key, um, Jerry Lynn, and AJ Styles. This is before uh, Low Key became Cabal. So this is yeah. before it became Senshi. He was yeah. Senshi and then Cabal. Then he went back to Low Key. This was before uh, he was work- This was before he was trying to be like the Hitman. Yeah. I remember. This is before Triple X. Daniels, Loki, and Elix Skipper. Primetime Elix Skipper. Oh, there's this one uh, tag team I uh, strictly remember. And it's a team of Matt Morgan. Oh, wait, I have to group myself. The Blueprint, Matt Morgan, and the best. Ah, I remember that. I remember. Yeah. I remember that. I remember the, uh, the Dr. Stevie storyline with Stevie Richards and Abyss. Uh, that was great, man. Stevie Richards. Steve, shout out to Stephen Richards, man. This dude was great. I remember... He, uh, he's one of those lost greats. ECW, he was the leader of the Blue Wall of Honor. Yeah. I remember he... Uh, a bit, I remember Abyss... Uh, Abyss trying talking to... Uh, Matt, I guess Abyss and Matt Morgan were going to have a, a Monsters Ball match, and Abyss was trying to get off of using weapons. And uh, <laughs> I was like, they were going to be in a tag team match with somebody. I remember, I remember the weird time when MMA stars were there. Like Rampage Jackson was on there, Tito Ortiz, King Mo. yeah, King Mo. I remember those weird times. I remember. I don't know if you guys remember this. Remember when Brandon Jacobs, at the time he was a running back for the New York Giants, appeared on there. Remember when Pac-Man Jones was tag team champions? I do, actually. I remember that. I remember the week like before that pay-per-view they were supposed to have. I remember his vignettes, like his debut vignettes. I remember those. I remember his theme song. It I do, like, too. <laughs> I do, too. I remember it was like, he's bad, he's bad, he's the Pac-Man Jones. It was something it was so on. basic. And then I remember... Because the thing that I remember about it, I remember each week, like before their match, because Kurt and Sting were tag team champions, reluctant tag team champions. And each week, like the first week, they got Sting. Like uh, Ron the Truth Killings or Our Truth as we know him now. And Pac Man attacked Sting, spray painted his back. And then. A week? No, they did. They did it to Kurt first, then they did it to Sting or one of them. But they, I know they got them both, and it was just like. And then the next impact I remember after the pay per view, they were the tag team champions, and I was like, "That's wow." Yeah, I still remember that because they had consequences. Creed with them, aka yeah. Xavier Woods. Yeah. Then I remember Jay Lethal becoming uh, Black Machismo. I remember that whole thing. I still remember the promos. 
because there was some shit with Kevin, Kevin Nash, which yeah. was some of the best, best skits. That, Kevin Nash did a lot for a lot of those guys. Oh, sorry, like, you, don't, you have no idea. What else? I guy, remember, but, oh, I remember, <laughs> I remember they tried to do the wedding with uh, Jay Lethal, tried to marry SoCal Val, and Sanjay Dudd uh, messed it up. Yeah. yeah, and then what was so crazy was like Jay Lethal called out Zanjay Dead to a to a bar and like kicked the holy shit out of him. It was like an empty bar and they kicked the crap out of each other. Yeah, this is not the best of 2018, ladies and gentlemen. We're covering some best of impact moments. Yeah. Uh, Do you guys remember when uh, Madison Rain? Her debut, and this is before she dyed her hair brown. She was literally having blonde hair. She debuted, and this is like before she became the uh, color queen and all that stuff. Hmm. I remember that because like she, I think she was like a little scared, or I think a little scared for the first match of Impact or or, or her second in Impact. Yeah, you know, I remember because she joined Angelina Love and Velvet Sky as the Beautiful People, and yeah. later Angelina Love's contract was going to be out, and they kicked her out of the Beautiful People. Yeah. And brought you know in, I, I remember because Madison Rain took over the Beautiful People and brought in Lacey Von Erich. Oh, my God. No, yeah, I don't know what had happened was she had visa issues at the time. This is Angelina Love because she's from Canada, so she, I guess she had visa issues. Or something went wrong, or she didn't get the right one. We don't know. Um, and so she was deported out of the U.S. And so they had to write her someone off the team. So they had uh, them saying, you need to kick her out of the uh, room because of the situation with the visa. So that's what ended up happening. Um, what else did I remember? Well, actually, while, while that happened, her contract ran out. So they but they released her, but then she came back a few months later. Yeah, and then um, oh, so I recall. Uh, I remember. Who uh, was that? I remember. What's another thing I remember? Golden Warrior is an empty. Marcus. I remember. Uh, I do remember that. That's uh, actually I was going to get to. No, 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 no. None of y'all are going to talk about this woman. Okay. I met this woman. I, I used to have her. I, I still do. I have her on Facebook. You talk about somebody that busted her ass for years to she get did. into impact. She did. She did. Really and they and she, she that was her that was her literal last chance to do something with her career, and they fucked her over. And I was legitimately a fan of that. She was a very nice. Woman. No, what I was going to say is she's, uh, when, uh, she was in an event, I pretty much liked her. It was like, but no one ever had that situation where they just went psycho, and she did it so freaking well. She did. I like that. That's, I think that's why that's I've always, story. I've always admired that kind of, like, whenever I see a gimmick like that, I'll say, okay, well, how do they do this one, you know? And then... They worked it pretty well. You know, she was doing a good job with it. I remember that whole thing when they brought in Raven and Daphne and Abyss. I mean, Abyss. Raven was who was it? It was Raven and Daphne versus Taylor Wilde and Abyss in that Monsters Ball mixed tag match. Um, yeah, Daphne was one of those women that they really dropped the ball on. Yeah. Because that was the last. She was like 48 now. I got her. So her career wasn't going to be much longer. That was her last year. Um, well, if you ask me, she was 38. no, I, I did not. She, I didn't did not. Look she didn't look it. She didn't look it. She, she looked, looked like she was more in her 20s. See, I was going to say mid, mid to late 20s. That's what I was going to guess. Yeah, but that's what I mean. You wouldn't have known that. I knew that. Like, I remember because me and Karen, me and Ka Karen, you don't remember this. It's been like four years ago now. But we talked about this. Like, TNA, the only thing that I really ever had an issue with was the way they dropped the ball on Daphne, and I was a huge Daphne fan. Me and Karen had a lot, like an hour and a half show about Daphne. Because I told Karen about her XPW history. Then, uh, what else? Um, there's a lot. There's a lot of, a lot in there, so. 
Yeah, um, we're not going to get into that again because me and Karen have already been there done that. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, unfortunately, those archives have been lost on Wild Talk Radio. Yeah. All right. So also, 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 my friends, everybody. I know this doesn't impact Karen too much. I do do crazy say? chicks, Danny. I really do. That's not a joke. I do do crazy chicks to an extent. Crazy chicks in wrestling are great. If you do them right. Oh, believe, believe me, buddy. Believe me, buddy. I'm sure we can do them right. Uh, hey, there you go. Um, so being serious for a moment, I have a bit of news I wanted to run by the uh, fans. Say your buddy. Isaac. Yes. So, I have got it approved and notarized and everybody's loving this. Karen, I don't think you're going to give a shit too much. Make this first because I have to go. No. Yeah, this one. Okay. Support solution is going to be a thing. Oh boy. Okay. No, no, it's going to be a thing. Everybody's going to have an opportunity to be on their show. Let's get on there and talk about sports. You can talk about soccer. I do like soccer. Yeah. Uh, Karen. Yeah. Final thoughts. Uh, it was fun. I well, I have the time. I uh, will see you guys next uh, next time. Um, that's my final thoughts. Y'all, y'all will hear from her Monday. Yeah. Yeah. That's official. We just don't know what time yet. I'll let y'all know Sunday. Definitely. <laughs> because I gotta wait on Anthony to make his final call. Mm. Nobody answered the man. He did his part. I'm going to double check with Breon tonight. All right, so Karen, you have a wonderful, you have a wonderful rest of your yeah, day. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Yeah, you're welcome. And don't work, don't work yourself too hard. Yeah, thank you. See you guys. See ya. Now, I suck. Yes. We got into impact history and some great moments like some stuff that we like right um i don't really see why we would have to delve into a lot of other stuff but for the sake of argument is there anything else or did you want to jump into some news well, what kind of news yeah. did you have did they, did they, uh, did you have? <laughs> what would you have no, I, you want to do news yeah Yeah. Yeah. This man really does does have a good Eli Drake voice. Mm. Um, gold card thirty six. I agree. Isaac really does have a good Eli Drake voice. Gold card thirty six says you really do have a good Eli Drake voice. Thank you, buddy. Thank you for that. Mm. He wanted to, he wanted me to get you to the yeah. Um, I will actually talk about that Sunday. I want to get Anthony's perspective and Isaac's. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to talk about Natalia Neidhart and this push and you know our thoughts on that. Because that, there's actually a couple of ways I see this going. And I really want to get Anthony's input. I feel like he would have, she was, she's a former SmackDown Live Women's Champion. So yeah, I think, here's the team. thing. I think people forget that. We forget that they have pulled the trigger on her before. The same thing with Naomi. But it was stupid. Like, the only reason they did it is just because they wanted to they were transitioning the title at the time. Still, like, still. They did pull the trigger on Naomi, and Naomi really... Did twice! They did it twice. Well, she got hurt the first time on that tour. Still, I'm just saying, the fact that they pulled Probably the trigger on them. Probably not actually Bliss had a bad injury round that, that, that little bout, so... I'm just saying, still, the fact that you pulled the trigger on somebody twice is... Saiyan or Super Saiyan? The fact that you do it, that you've... Put, you say, okay, we're going to put the title on this person, regardless of what reasoning is behind it. It obviously means something to me, anyway. That's how I look at it. Like Rosemary's reign is knockout champion for 266 days, regardless of whatever it was for. The fact that she had it that long obviously means something. It means that at the time she was the most over woman in the company. Exactly, she really was. Everything, seriously. Then they started bringing in other women, and that's why she lost at that injury. Yeah. So, there. Bye, bye. Uh, okay. So, we're going to do some news, ladies and gentlemen. Just, 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 just,
I was like, this news isn't going to take us too long, so let's, let's just run it about. Yeah. Um, hang on. I'll just do Won't you? Thank you. Go away. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, sources told PW Insider that Bray Wyatt will be with Raw live events after Christmas, including Madison Square Garden. Said who? Uh, due to his latest uh, this is the Pro Wrestling Insider, and on his Twitter, he will be at Madison Square Garden. You know the big thing. Oh right, right, right. And and so that confirms that his Twitter post confirms he's not leaving because there was speculation he might be leaving WWE, and or they might be releasing him because they have nothing for him. It, no, uh, no, and I'm gonna be honest with this. I want to get my thought. I just feel like this was a repackaging, which he really needed. But I don't want him to change his style because he's so good at it. Yeah, like seriously, Bray, whether people will admit this or not, Bray can cut pro. Oh, hell yeah. That's about the only thing that WWE's allowed him to do. Yeah. You know what he can't, you know, you know what WWE creative can't let him do? What? Win a pay-per-view. Yeah, you got me there. He wins matches and, and is a viable threat. They build him, but they never pull the trigger on a Bray Wyatt victory. Yeah. So. And a lot of us find that to be infuriating. We love Bray Wyatt. Yeah. He's like, like, Rusev, he... is, Rusev is our spirit beast, man. We love Rusev. Yeah. We'll be talking. If you've seen this spoilers, then you already know what I'm talking about. But Rusev, Rusev he's our spirit beast. Love the man. Yeah. He is very much that. Yeah, so what, uh, what, uh, what are the news in there? I mean, like I said, Bray, to me, like, I guess to me, Bray is like I put him on a list with Killer Cross. You like their gimmicks are kind of dark, well, supposed to be dark, but it's like when they, whatever they do, they're, and for me personally, whatever they do, I want to see what it is. You know, whether it be their matches or just whether it's them cutting promos or backstage segments, because both of them are very good at that. So that's just me. That's just what I think. So, yeah, that's just what I think. What about you? Donovan? Sorry, I'm looking at this ant bait. Okay. Um, I also want to get to my list of matches that... Uh, I have on my favorites list, like the matches you should watch. It's told by me, so. The ants killed themselves. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, that's Bray Wyatt. So, what do you have to say about this? Are you good? No, I'm good. I said what I wanted to say about it. So. Dave Bouncer. Hi, Uncle Dave. Oh, I thought I deleted that. I responded to a question about Shinsuke Nakamura's status in WWE saying he's not going back to Japan. And believe me, Dave Bouncer would love to believe this man's going back to Japan. So, so he's not. Dave Bouncer saying he's not going back to Japan. And his contract's up at the end of January, end of late January. He's not going back to Japan. Shinsuke Nakamura, I personally have talked to him. I mean, it's not like just one of those interview things. I should talk to him on Twitter. Um, and cool dude, cool dude. Always been a cool dude. Um, he basically says, you know, um, the reason he went to WWE is because it's a lot less strain on his body. And he's getting up there. He's getting up there in years. He said that WWE is less hectic, but this was this was the NXT. Um, the travel schedule was less hectic, and main roster. I don't know. NXT. He went to WWE because NXT was less hectic. I don't know what his take on the main roster is. I don't. Mm. So I don't know. I don't know where Shinsuke Nakamura really stands, but um, you know. He likes the King of the Slow style. Fair enough. It ain't for everybody. Yeah, but for him, 
This is Shinsuke Nakamura. This is a guy that was sitting there throwing himself, his knee, himself into people and bust his knee up trying to slam people with his knee as hard as he could. <laughs> so they didn't slow down in the next day. How that? Because this dude was hurling his knee at people. Could, you can see he he sometimes he would totally miss and hurt himself. Yeah, you're right. Nice. The walking concussion factory, Shinsuke Nakamura. I mean, this dude, he's a great wrestler. And, it, you know, if he wants to stay in WWE, if it's good for his body, cool. I mean, all of us want him to go back to New Japan, but if he did leave WWE, I don't see him returning to New Japan. Not after what he said. But you know where I would have liked to see him go? Where? Don't say impact, because that's not going to happen. Ring of Honor. That would be cool. I don't see why he couldn't go to Ring of Honor. I mean, he was there before. I mean, I know he didn't do it long, but he was still there before. Yeah, and I feel like he could go there. He ain't going to no fucking uh, DNA. We've already seen how they handle Japanese girls. How Taiji Ishimori left. But I feel like Taiji Ishimori left because he, was going, he wanted to go to New Japan. Yeah. And I think like, who doesn't want to go to New Japan, especially if you're Japanese? <laughs> <laughs> fucking, you know, come mm-hmm. All right, so I, I just wanted to get those little tidbits out of the way. I have nothing against this man or his decision. I think it's it's a completely understandable point. Yeah, it makes sense. I like it. So the next movie, Paige will be focused on promoting fighting with my family soon, and that's one of the reasons why she's taken out of the SmackDown general manager role. Okay, well, as for this, how come she wasn't the fucking star of the movie, or at least in the movie as herself? That that is a good fair. She doesn't that. even have to be the one who plays Young Paige. She just could have been in the movie as her like in her later years or stuff. That, that, that is completely fair. That's the only reason she's still employed after all the Alberto Del Rio shit. Yeah, well, what are you gonna do? The Rock saved her job. Let's be honest. Yeah. says that there are plans to shoot segments of R-Truth and Carmella on WWE headquarters as a follow-up to the Mixed Next nice Challenge oh my God. Dream Vacation Angle. I I I want to see Y'all wait. made this man speechless. Come on, y'all. I, I, I'm curious as to what's going I'm, I'm really not. I mean, it's R-Truth. R-Truth is a lovable guy, man. Like, he really is. Like, in real... I got to meet him when he was with Impact, and, and I talked to people that knew him back before. This is the kind of guy to be outside and offer you a cigarette. Yeah. So I'm outside, talk to you. Yeah. So this is even if he was busy. Yeah. So I I feel like this is going to be something interesting to see. So what? What? Oh, go ahead. So what? No, it was just. I got a notification. I don't even pay attention to him during the show. Okay. Um, Pro Wrestling Insider also says Mark Haskins has signed with Ring of Honor. Yeah, I heard about that. I saw his reaction on Twitter. Ring of Honor plans to use New Japan's Will Ospreay as much as possible in 2019. Well, I would hope so. Yeah, well, as much as possible because he'll be injured half of the like 90% of the time. Yeah. We'll call him A, we'll call him B. Oh, God, no. Pro Wrestling Insider also reports that these guys are reliable. So, also reports that after, immediately following WrestleMania, or not WrestleMania, Royal Rumble, we will be getting the next WWE 24 documentary. 
Okay. Well, let's hope it's someone. Who is it on? Ronda Rousey. Uh, okay. I don't really fucking care. I mean... I mean, at this point, that shit is, like, so irrelevant. Yeah. Anything else? Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. There's some stuff here that we can talk about. I mean, this is one of those who the fuck cares. According to wrestling, the Wrestling Observer, Uncle Dave, Finn Balor is getting a big push. It's soon. not the first time I've heard that today. Seriously. Uncle Dave says it's going to happen. You know, if Uncle Dave says it, it has to be true. Yeah, well, I mean, because Uncle Dave was never wrong. Well, it's just one of those things that you just hear it repeating over and over again. This is why it's like one of my pet peeves about this stuff. Is like you hear it one way, it's like, oh, okay, that's cool. And you hear it again from a different source. Somebody else posts it. It's like, yeah, I heard, I already know. Like, you don't need to keep refreshing it. But then again, it's for everybody who hasn't seen it. Then I think, well, who hasn't seen it? So. I won't hold my breath until it actually happens. This is what I think. Yeah. Uncle Dave. Yeah, so. Thank you, Uncle Dave, for your speculative news. Uncle Dave said it, so it has to be true. Remember, he's the same guy that does every New Japan match at least it's five stars. Um, Dave Monster mentions that hearing from Vince, hearing from a source that whether or not Vince McMahon ends up liking. Otis Dozovic, Dozovic, how do you say that? Dozovic. Dozovic will determine if heavy machinery will make it to the main of main roster. Well, I mean, I feel like it's going to be the same thing. You got to look at killing your name. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to. I don't know. I can't. I don't know what to say. What to say about it? I got nothing. At this point, I was just like. Uh, yeah. Right. You know, they're probably going to shit all over another NXT team. Like, I'm not even I mean, who cares? That. If anything, out of the people they, they announced, the people I really want to succeed, the only person I really want to succeed is Lacey Evans. I want the DC3 to succeed. No, I want both they're of them. Already to. Shit on I want both of them to succeed. That's it. I don't care about Lars. I like heavy machinery, but we all know how they handle tag teams. They're not going anywhere. And then uh, who else got called up? Nikki Cross is probably I, – I, I don't know what they're going to do with that. But whatever. What am I know? Anyway, what else is there? Wrestling Observer also says that the, it's now being reported the Bucks and Cody – Turned down seven figure de- annual deals from WWE. Well, I bet it's worth it. To them, it's worth it. Because they, cause they always talk about being away they from their. They turned down seven figure annual deals. Yeah, I know. So that means they must have an idea, and it must, whatever idea it is, it must be worth it. Or they just want to spend more time with their families. Come on, thing for sure, they're not retiring. Also, speaking of the Bucks, they're not going to be at the G1 Supercard show. The ROH New Japan G1 Supercard Show. They're not going to be there. But they encourage everybody to still go. So. Is that just the Bucks? The Bucks said that. They're not going. But they encourage other people to be there. You know who else is not going? Who? Justin Rose. Throw something random out there and see what Isaac says. Um, I, Isaac says, um, when you do this random shit, I really don't know if even I should follow responding. Um, Actually, I'd love to see uh, Dustin Rhodes show up at a, at a show for Cody. I would love to see the family respect. Yeah. I'd really love to see uh, him show up at a, a new uh, on or a uh, NWA show, considering that's where their father made a big name for himself, too. Cool. Um. I was going to say, then you have, uh, I'm still trying to plan to go to New York for WrestleCon. That's still in the works. Still in the works. Speaking of which, see something. 
So uh, do we have anything else? Because I was going to run quickly through some of the matches I think people should watch. Not matches of 2018, just matches in general. Or put this way, most of them are matches that I watched in 2018. So. Um, yeah, I still have more. Oh, okay. But I would save all of those recommendations. Um, I mean, if there's some recommendations, you know, that aren't the best, just recommended watches. Yeah, that, that, that's what most of them are. Tr- Next week, we're going to try to do a best of 2018. I mean, me, you, and Anthony are really going to have fun on that. If Anthony's there. Well, I mean, that's what most of them are. So, I mean, they're mostly recommendations. But not really, uh, not really in there. To be no offense to the guy, but I want to say he's not high on the radar. But well, he's gone. So uh, chances are we'll be saying hi to him on the network soon. Yay! Hey, 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 you know, hey, hey, you know what? what? Lean in. You know what you can tell the fans? And Cody Rhodes, we'll quote Cody Rhodes here. I only have two words for you. Performance center. <laughs> you know, that's never going to get old. I love being the elite. Great. I'm going to wait. I am so glad they do that. I love being the elite. And this is what we would, for all those saying, oh, we should come to WWE, they should come to WWE, but you really like being the elite? Yeah. There will be no being the elite if, uh, if, uh, if they come to WWE. Well, I don't know, because fucking Xavier Woods still does up, up, down, down. And well, no, that's. Have a lot of well. He's one of the, he's one of the exceptions because Vince loves that. Yeah. They get a lot of freedom. Exactly. Vince, Vince loves Vince. Actually, Vince likes Xavier and uh, Biggie. So he's not really a big fan of Kofi. Eh, well, what are you gonna do? I still love that uh, time travel segment. Kofi's old theme song played, and he's like. Those are some of my best years. <laughs> I'm like, no, it really wasn't Kofi. I don't care who wrote that. You're, 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 that wasn't your best years. That was some of your worst years, man. Don't even try to lie to us, man. We ain't buying it. Whatever, whatever WWE is selling, we ain't buying. All right, so that's yes. That's it for me. All right, that's it. All right, to close out the. Sh- I thought you had something else. No, I didn't. I didn't have any new news. Wise, no, I didn't have anything. <laughs> I thought he was about to say I didn't have any news. Uh, what I was gonna say was uh, stomach. Fuck up. Um, what I was going to say was if uh, I'm about here's some matches that that I watched in 2018 that I highly recommend you guys check out. 
Um, one of them is uh, one. The main match that is is pretty much. Uh, it is. Let me see if I can find it. If you haven't seen Io Shirai, any any of Io Shirai's work in Stardom before she came to WWE, I highly. Most of these matches are on YouTube. You just gotta find them. Uh, if you haven't seen Io Shirai versus, um, it, it, while she was in Stardom, or if you haven't seen Mako's, um, any of Mako Satomura's work before the Mae Young Classic, they actually had a match together in Stardom on April 26, 2014. So check that match out. Um, one match I recommend to anybody who cares about wrestling is uh, Tessa Blanchard versus Brian Cage at, at Wrestle Circus. Yes, it is an intergender match, but I'm telling you, you will not be disappointed by the match, by the, how, the way the match plays out. Um, if you've never seen an Ultimate X match, one I recommend is AJ Styles versus Nick, Chris Saban versus Petey Williams. Uh, it was at, memory serves me correctly, this match was at Bomb for Glory. Uh, it was for the X Division title and the Ultimate X match. Um, is that the one where, where the title, where the title fell, where the title fell? Yeah, what do you mean? Is that the one where Petey Williams won because the title fell? No, no, no. It was the one where Petey and uh, Chris Saban were fighting. They both unhooked the title, and they both were playing tug of war. When it, uh, AJ hit a springboard, that hit a springboard, knocked the title down, and captured it. So there, I just spoiled it for you. Um, also, if you're looking for pre WWE NXT Johnny Gargano or pre NXT Candice LeRae, they had a match together in Smash Wrestling for the Smash Wrestling Championship. Great match. Um, if you all right, so if you in triple, there's another match. If you've never seen any of Zack Saber Jr.'s work, I recommend Zack Saber Jr. Versus a kid in Triple W, uh, which is White Wolf Wrestling. It's a Mexican promotion. Very well done match. Um, one thing, two, a couple of matches I always recommend to each other: Candice LeRae and Joey Ryan versus the Buck, Young Bucks in PWG. Uh, very great match. Great match. Uh, Killshot versus Dante Fox in a Hell of War match, which is essentially three stages of hell. First one is First Blood. Second one is uh, is No DQ, and third is uh, uh, is an ambulance match. Well, except you don't put them in an ambulance; you put them inside of a of a medi of a medivac. Um, Kevin Steen and versus El Generico and uh, fight in Ring of Honor. Thank you, Facebook, for interfering in Isaac. We're not hearing Isaac say it. Just go ahead. It was Kevin Steve versus uh, in Fight for Honor. It was uh, in 2012. Uh, Donovan actually put me on to this. It was Akira Hokuto versus Shinobu Kandori. Um, if you haven't seen Akira Hokuto work, that's a good match for it. Um, these, these, the next two matches, uh, well, they're the same people involved in them. Well, actually, no, it's not true. Um, a couple matches I want to see is that you need to see if you are a fan of extreme matches, whereas literally people could literally die, uh, then you should check out Megumi Kudo versus Shark Shuchia in her, it's in Megumi Kudo's retirement match. Or Combat Toyota versus Megumi Kudo. Or that too. Um, yeah, there's that. And then another match. This is a match I saw this year. Um, it was in House of Glory in a no ropes match. It was Anthony Gangone versus Amazing Red. Uh, the match was just... It was insane. It was just... Like, you know the match I'm talking about? Hell yes, I do. Yeah, the mat. He he literally said it. the match was beautiful. Just great storytelling. Remember, you actually sent me the link to the match. Yeah. Like three times. Yeah, it was it was a that was because it was that good. 
it was that good of a match. And then no, because Facebook didn't send it the first two. Okay. Then well, I got all three of them when you sent the third match. Yeah. That too. And then well, the last match I saw this year, but oh, that, that I saw this year during the year and I would recommend is Eddie Edwards versus Naomichi Marafuji. Uh this was I love Marafuji though. Marafuji's oh, yeah. great. Yeah, I I never seen a Marafuji match until this one. I know he took on Okada when during when Okada first won the belt, but I've never, I never, but I've never watched a match, and so this match was great because I because what I was doing at the time, I was looking for because I I heard uh, Don Callis say that Eddie Edwards became the first uh, foreigner to win the GHC Heavyweight Championship in pro wrestling Noah, and I was curious as to how he won it. So I watched the match he had before, and when he won it, and it was good, but it didn't really wasn't really all that great. So then I watched the match. Then it said after the match when he won it, Marufuji came out and challenged him for the next for the next shot. And then I watched the match with Marufuji and Eddie, and the match was just wonderful, absolutely wonderful, great work. What? Yeah, it, it is pretty great. The man can go. Marafuji can go. He, can he went go. one on one with Okada. Yeah. Five star classic in the G one. Yeah. It was uh he also in pro re- in uh pro wrestling Noah, he fought Shelton Be- Shelton Benjamin when during when the time when Suzuki Goon was banished to Noah from New Japan. So yeah. For those fun fact for those who don't know, Shelton Benjamin was at one time a part of Suzuki Goon. He went by Sheldon X. Benjamin for some reason. So, yeah. I, I love how he was Sheldon X. Yeah. So, yeah. But those are the matches I recommend. They're in my... Fi- yes. I want to know something, Sam. Be quiet. Let's go. I have Roku now, so I have the fight app. Awesome. So, so I get to get, I, I can watch Rev Pro and stuff on that, can I not? Yes, you can watch Rev Pro. I'm pretty sure they're going to stream WrestleCon. The WrestleCon shows on there. Uh, you'll get Homecoming. Uh, you'll get New Japan, uh, Wrestle Kingdom. You even get bare knuckle fights from England. So. <laughs> yeah, and I also have this thing called wrestling. Not wrestling, but wrestling. 1970s and 80s matches. All right, then. All right. So, uh, but that's all I have. If you don't have anything else. No, no I, I have one more thing. Okay. One more thing. As the, as, as the personal representative of the Golden Powers, I've been asked this question. This is not going to take a lot of months. People are asking, is Golden Warrior actually going to enter the Battle Royale? No. No. I'm taking time. To I this uh, going to step away from the world title pic- picture for now. Um, I got to worry about my crew. You know, we got a lot of got a lot of stuff to figure out right now. Well, you guys don't know. Like I said, I may be a fighting champion, but I'm also a fighter. I'm a fighter first. I'm a fighting champion, but I'm a fighter first. You know, well, I'm not a fighting champion right now, but so so my goal right now is to get back. What's ours and Midas? We are going to get back the tag team titles. That's the goal right now. That is the goal. The, uh, and also deal in faction militia. warfare. The militia split. They're done. Well, still, I imagine there will be another threat that comes towards us to try and break us up, and we will combat it. That's the goal. Don't worry about the faction right now. That's my goal. Midas is still out. Matthew Alday and you have a shot at Battle Royal against Jack Crisp and oh. the aforementioned Chad Thibodeau. Oh, like I said, that's Midas what we're focused on. Midas back in time. Mad, Midas won't be back in time for Battle Royal, so he won't even be in the Battle Royal either. Oh, like I said, that's what we're focused on. We're just trying yeah, to focus. Here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. Go ahead, Isaac. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'll say that's what we're going to focus on. We're going to focus on getting the tag team titles back. We'll worry about that later. Yeah, he'll focus on that. I, the ruler of all, the devil, will face that clown and take the title that rightfully belongs to the Golden Powers back. 
and bring him home, and I'll be sure I put the uh, clown down and bring the title back home where it belongs because the Golden Warrior is uh, not worried about it. But me, I'm always worried about the Nick Belt on the shoulders of the Golden Towers. Yeah, so that's why you're here, buddy. And now, and now it's my opportunity. Yep, win it for us, but we'll mostly do it for yourself. I do it for the whole Yeah, you have your back. The clown decided to abandon his match Monday, but Jack Chris took over. Jack Chris was figuring out that clown's not very reliable when you draw him away from the arena. It's a wonder what a psycho, a psychotic clown will do when you send him notations on specific things that, that he may not want to express publicly. So anyway, uh, final thoughts, Isaac. That's my thought. I'm the Twitter, I'm the Twitch champion. We got the Twitter title on our side. Um, oh, we still got, and we got, the, we technically have the underground belt. You know, we, we have belts. Cutter Bushy's still a $1 member. We have, we just need to get back the, the grand t- Phoenix grand title. And the uh, tag titles, bring them back home. Then we'll worry about the YouTube championship later. Uh, my final thoughts are simple. Um, stay golden. And Rosemary is coming back at homecoming. She's making an appearance on homecoming. <laughs> Shut up. And then also, Wrestle Kingdom is probably is going to be a kickoff to a very – Strong year in professional wrestling. When I say that, every match at Wrestle, every other match that happens in 2019 is going to have to be measured to the matches that happen at Wrestle Kingdom. I'm uh, calling calling it now. Every match at Wrestle Kingdom is is going to be a measuring stick. Yeah, every every match at Wrestle Kingdom is going to be a measuring stick for every other match that happens in, in 2019. I'm sorry, that's just how it's going to be. It is. Okay. It is. Especially in world title yeah. matches. Tanahashi yeah. Tanahashi yeah. and Omega is going to be that good where it's going to be a metric stick. Because think about it. You will still measure Okada and Omega Dominion from earlier this year. They still measure that up So to other matches that have happened so far. They still bring it up, and that was in June. So okay. definitely Tanahashi and Omega is going to be one of those matches that from the beginning of the year – to the end of the year is going to be a measuring stick for every other match that goes down. People are going to say, wow, this match was good, but was it as good as Tanahashi Omega? Or even was it as good as Ibushi Osprey? That's how much faith I have a faith I have in that match. You know? Just that's what I believe. Or was it as good as Jericho Naito? Those three matches are going to be the measuring sticks. I firmly believe. That's close. Yeah, I firmly believe that. You know what my final thoughts are? What? Stay good. Kiss my ass if you're going to try to bash Elias. Walk with Elias. Seriously? Walk the golden path with Elias. Um, and most of all, big fan, keep doing, please guys, keep doing what you're doing on Big Neely. My favorite fucking wrestling group. My wrestling with uh, weekly podcast. Please keep doing that. You guys are great. Yeah. And we appreciate all the work you, you guys put into that. We really do. Um, other than that, we will see you all later. All right. All right. Y'all have a good one.